The other thing, um, whenever you're glazing something that's wide, you need to balance it on the other side. So depending on the glaze, there's compression, tension, you need to get some glass on the other side to balance that out. So in this case, this has trimmed out, and you get these extra rims for extra strength, but you get glaze inside here. So you get glaze here, and you get glaze here, and that's good. What if you don't have glaze here? What happens occasionally is you put this on your hot water or warm water, and the thing will just crack because of that tension or that compression resulting from glaze only being on one side. All right, so this is good. So this is why anything that's wide, you try to get a foot ring in there. You make the foot ring deep enough. How do you know it's deep enough? You pull it up to something straight like this, and you sign across there. And if that looks like it's deep enough to put a glaze, and you all know how thick a glaze is, yes? So this has got like a quarter of an inch gap, which is just plenty. Okay, are we good with that? Yes. So I'm gonna throw a slab out on the slab roller. I'm gonna roll out a slab on the slab roller. And then I'm gonna come over here and put that coil on there, and that's it. So the only real, I think, tricky part to this is the trimming stage. People inevitably leave these edges way thick, thicker than they need to be, and then the clay is unevenly thick and thin, and then it cracks, oh, which is not so good, all right? So yes, try to pay very close attention to what? Measuring the thickness of the wall with a needle tool and then trimming it appropriately.